What's up you phonies, how's it going? This video is dedicated to all the Blender 3D artists out there who deleted their default cube just to add another one in. Pretty ridiculous, but everybody has done it, right? But by the end of this video, I'm actually gonna show you how you can get rid of the default cube for good. But for now, I'm gonna show you how you can shoot and make a scene the way I did. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process. So enjoy and like the video already. That's gonna help me a lot. But now, let's go. Here we have myself destroying imaginary default cubes. There's one on the left, there's gonna be one on the right, and another one straight ahead with a 540 kick. Bam! Now I just have to color grade the footage. I'm gonna increase the contrast so it's gonna be easier for Blender to recognize tracking points. Now I'm gonna track my footage in Blender. I'm obviously gonna remove all the tracks on myself. I don't wanna track me, I wanna track the background. Then I'm gonna delete all the unnecessary tracks which are not great and then I have my camera movement. Now I can add my first default cube. I bring it into uh, 3D space where I believe it's gonna be at. It's very hard to say sometimes because it's a 2D video but you know. Now I gotta fracture my default cube. I do that with RDB Lab. I also can add particles to make this thing look awesome. Then I'm gonna make it a rigid body simulation so it has gravity. Then, of course, I have to make a CG sort. Basically a cube which is gonna go right through my cube. So my real sword, which is not real in 3D, can be in CG also. So it can actually interact as if I ran a sword right through it. Then I'm gonna bake this whole thing and then that's what it looks like. Now, of course, I have to add some particles. I'm gonna add debris dust and smoke it's very easy with this add-on it basically happens automatically all i had to do is making one particle and assign it and that's basically what i'm going to do for all of those cubes that's just the first one and of course you need to adjust a few things like the count how many particles do you want the size of those particles but don't make them too big because then this is going to happen and that's not what you want. So to keep them small, as small as possible, but as big as necessary so you can actually see them. Time for the second cube. Same thing. I just make a default cube, put it somewhere in 3D space where I believe I would be hitting it and name your cubes. You need to organize your things. And after that, I do the same thing. I'm going to fracture it, give it particles. The tricky part is I need this animation to start a little later because if the baking starts too early for that, it's just going to fall through the floor and it's not going to be visible anymore. So I do need to animate the animated section of my particles and make sure that they only start when I actually hit it with my sword. And after that, I of course need to copy paste the sword I had in the beginning. So I just use the same one and move it to the other queue and then it's gonna break the same way. Then of course I'm gonna add some particles the same way I did in the beginning. Add some dust, some debris, and some smoke. And now it's time for the last cube. I'm gonna kick away with this super cool 540. I'm gonna make another cube, bring it in the 3D space where I believe it's gonna be. And then in the right moment when I actually hit it, I fraction it, give it particles, dust, smoke, and debris. I need another sword, in that case it's my leg, so I make another cube a little thicker the size of my leg. I know it's a skinny leg, but you know, I skip leg there here and there. And then in the right time, I run it right through the cube. And now I have all the cubes getting destroyed in the right time. And smack the last one. Don't forget to remove all your destruction objects from the renders, meaning the digital swords. And that's pretty much it. Since the camera track was not perfect, I had a very high error score. There's something I always do in post. When I bring the footage into After Effects, I add a little extra camera shake, especially on those impacts and maybe a little zoom in, zoom out to make this look more dynamic, but that's pretty much it. So now I promised you in the beginning of the video, if you actually want to remove your default cube for good so you don't have to delete it every time you open blender get rid of your default cube for the very last time in your life click on file default and save startup file then you never have to delete the default cube again so you don't have to go through all the trouble you know what i'm saying 
But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to know more in depth how to destroy objects like that, make sure to click this video because I went through this process very, very much in detail. So check that out next. Consider subscribing and see you in the next video. Ta-da!